some things you're going to need for this tutorial today is white or off-white yarn for the toe area of the sneaker slipper and then whatever your main color of your slipper is going to be a g-hook a sewing needle and a pair of scissors I'm going to start the slippers how I always start slippers and I'm going to do a magic ring so quickly show you to do that three fingers of your left hand go ahead and wrap the yarn around it turn your fingers over make an X over the back and the side that's lined up with your ring finger I'm going to go under the first one grab the back one and turn it upwards then take your index finger and slide it right under there and go ahead and grab the loop and you want to hold it and chain one. Now we're going to put eight half double crochet into the magic ring. So yarn over, go into the loop, three, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. So you want to do that eight times. and make sure you're working over the ring itself and the short end that way when you pull the short end close it'll close it up for you now if you're a stitch marker person you can go ahead and use a stitch marker or a piece of yarn or a bobby pin or a paper clip or whatever you have now that your ring is closed you want to go ahead and slip stitch to the first half double crochet that you made chain one and you want to put two single or oh, sorry two half double crochets in every stitch that you make but the first stitch that you make go ahead and slide a stitch marker on there so that's one and two now you want to put two in every stitch around which will get you sixteen half double crochets for round two. I have 16 half double crochets for round two so I'm going to go ahead and take out my stitch marker and slip stitch right where my marker was into the first half double crochet that we made for round two. Then you're going to chain one and you want to put one half double crochet into that same stitch Oop. came off there and then always mark your first stitch two half double crochet go into the next stitch then you want to alternate that one in the next two in the next now continue that all the way around if you have trouble knowing where you're supposed to put your increases increases go into the increase from the round before so this is the stitch in between two increases if you can tell so I put one in there here's an increase because there's two in the one from the row before you increase into that one so now this is the stitch between two increases one in there there's an increase from the round before, two in there. Go ahead and continue that all the way around. I've come to the end of round three, and I have 24 stitches for round three. So I will go ahead and slip stitch to the first half double crochet that we made and chain one. So real quickly, 
just so uh, you know, and if in case you, in case anybody doesn't know that, you need to increase by however many are in the center each row out. So I started with eight, then I add eight more, and that's your double row. Your you double all the stitches in the next row. Then you add eight more in the next row. You keep adding eight all the way out. So eight. You know, plus another 8 is 16, plus another 8 is 24. So it increases by the number of however many are in the center in each row until you have it as wide as you need. So I chained one, and now I'm going to half double crochet into that same stitch. Add my stitch marker. Now if you're making these for a child, then this might be enough stitches around for a child. Uh, then you would just put one in each for the next round, uh, and then you know continue on with your however you need to make your slipper. So I've got one half double crochet in the first stitch. I want to put one half double crochet in the next stitch, and then we've hit the increase from the round before. Go ahead and increase into that one by putting two half double crochet into the third stitch. And then you continue. Or repeat. One in the next. One in the next. Two in the next. So however stitches you however many stitches you need for this round, that's how many stitches you need to put into this round. So if you need to do one into a stitch in order to keep it a certain number instead of increasing, then that's what you're gonna do. I'm actually going to increase into round five as well for two stitches so I can get that extra two stitches for my foot. And you can do more than that if you have a wider foot than I do. So continue one say half double crochet one half double crochet and then two half double crochet so go ahead and continue one one two one one two all the way around and at the end of this round you'll have 32 stitches if you need to have less stitches than this then just skip some of the increases and just put one half double crochet in each stitch that you need uh, to make it the number that you need. I've got my 32 stitches for round four, so I'm going to go ahead and take out my stitch marker and slip stitch where I took my stitch marker out. Now we're going to do one more round in this color. If you prefer a bigger toe area than the one that I have on my slipper, then you can go ahead and add a sixth row. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the five because I already made the first one and the first one has five. So uh, I'm going to, for me, I'm going to increase a few more into this round because I know that I want to add two extra stitches for room for myself because I have such tight tension as you can see. It's like solid. Um, so if you don't need to increase anymore, you just need to put one in each all the way around. I'm going to add a couple of increases, the two increases that I need to increase this to the size that I want it. So if you do need to do that, then you just put one in the first stitch, one in the second stitch, one in the third stitch, and then you come upon your increase from the round before. So you'll increase right into there. and repeat. One, 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 and I reached my increase from the round before. Two. Now if you have wider feet, you can add more increases in this round. Um, wherever you see an increase from the round before, you can go ahead and add one. Or if you're making it for somebody that has very, very big feet, like a man, 
then you can continue to increase all the way around if needed. It just depends on how many stitches that you need. I've got my 34 stitches around. And I notice I didn't use my stitch marker. I usually only use that for uh, videos. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to the first half double crochet that we made. Chain one. And pull it out some. Take your scissors. Go ahead and end off. Unless you're making a fifth or a wait, sixth round, one, two, three, four, five, sixth round in white or off white or whatever this color is, then uh, you would just end it after that. So now we're going to attach our second color and we'll start working on the part that heads up the foot. I've got my second color, so I'm just going to add a slip knot to my hook. I'm going to grab my toe area, and right where you made that connection, there should be a little hole underneath there. Go ahead and push that in there. Yarn over. And go ahead and slip stitch your second color to the row. Turn it around and grab the short end. Push that knot and pull the strand at the same time so it tightens it to the row. Then you're going to work over your tail ends of red and white. So go ahead and lay them lay them over your working yarn. Then I'm just going to chain one to lock it in place. And I'm going to put one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around, working over my two tail ends for at least a, at least a few inches, so they're you know in the work, and you don't have to worry about sewing them in later because I hate that. Just put one half double crochet in each all the way around for as many stitches as you're using. For me, it's 34. Oh, totally forgot to mark the first stitch. But if you if you don't need to mark your stitches, it's not going to be a, a big deal. If you do need to mark your stitches, then go ahead and put always put the stitch marker in the first stitch that you make. So I've finished my first round in my red color, and I'm going to slip stitch to my first half double crochet, chain one, and we're going to continue to put one in each stitch. You can see it's starting to curve around now. We're going to put one in each stitch all the way around for as many rows back as we need. So go ahead and put one in each stitch all the way around for however many rows you need for it to come back about this far on your foot. I'll also show you another example after I get the front section on this one done. Alright, so I have finished the front of foot area for my slipper. I made the red 16 rows long and the white is an additional 5. And you're going to see, where is it, right there from where you're connecting it kind of makes a, a ridge. So just go ahead and place that underneath the bottom. That way you won't have to look at it and then the top will be seamless. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my foot and show you uh, how far back you're going to want it to go. Alright, so I've tried it on my foot and that's about how far you want it to come back on your foot. The other part is going to come up this way to form the heel part of the slipper. Go ahead and grab your stitch markers and go ahead and place your stitch markers about how high up on the foot you want those sides to come. And 
because it leaves about that much space open. This is where we're going to create a little tongue area and we're going to crochet from one hook around the back and create the footbed. So we'll get started on that right now. So like I showed you before, go ahead and take your connecting side and place it under the bottom so that your top will be good and seamless. And we're going to start working from one stitch marker around the back to the next one. So we want to end this row and we're going to start in a new place. So, oops, anyway, end here and go ahead and attach another slip knot to your hook. And I'm going to want you to find your stitch marker. And if you're looking straight at your two stitch markers, go to the one on the left. Slip stitch the color back to the row. Take the short end, push that little knot so it tightens it to the row better. And just go ahead and crochet over your tail end. And just put one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around until you reach your second stitch marker. Okay, so I've reached my stitch marker. Take it out, go into that same stitch. Then you just want to chain one, turn the slipper around, half double crochet into the first stitch and every stitch to the end of the row here and you want to have the same number in every single row and that's going to start to build up this back part of the footbed. So you do that until it's long enough to for you to take the two sides and bring it around the back of your foot and it fit around the back of your foot and then I'll do that as many rows as I need to because I see how many I've done here. I'll go ahead and match what I have to this slipper and I'll come back and show you what it's supposed to look like. Alright so I finished making the heel section and what you want to do is go ahead and pull the two sides and make sure that the top part meets up. If the top part meets up the other part will be fine. So we'll go ahead and start sewing the back closed and then we'll work on the, the laces and that's going to be almost it. Oh, the laces and the little tongue area. Alright, so I already chained one at the end, so now I'm going to just cut a long enough length for you to sew the back end in. I cut about a foot and grab your yarn needle. And for people that have a hard time threading yarn needles, just go ahead and lay the yarn over the needle. Pinch down, slide it out, and then do kind of a sawing motion. It should just jump right on there. Now how you sew your slipper closed is really up to you. I'll go ahead and show you how I like to sew them closed, just to make sure they don't come undone. Line up the two sides and make sure you're actually looking at the top parts of the stitches, the actual stitches. And I go from one end to the other, working in outer loops only. So, outer loop to outer loop. And just go ahead and do that all the way down. Go ahead and take the needle, push it through the very corner where the last part you sewed would be, flip it inside out, 
and then when you worked on the outer loops it left all these on the inside go ahead and just sew those together as well these are the leftover loops from before so these were the inner loops from before I like to do the very top one the same one twice then just take your needle and you can just run it down the center and if you want to go back up you can go back up as well just to make sure it's in there got your enclosed sneaker slipper. Now if you at this point you might also want to just flip it inside out and sew in the rest of your tails. So all my ends are cut and tied in. I worked over my ends so I didn't really see a whole lot of need for sewing them in but if you want to make them even more secure so you know they won't kind of slip out you can go ahead and sew them in. So looking at your slipper the corner where the side meets the top just go ahead and put your hook in there I've got a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to put my hook in I'm going to slip stitch it to right there move over to that first stitch but work in the front loops only and go ahead and put one single crochet in the first one single crochet in the second and then two single crochets in the third one and only working in the front loops go ahead and just repeat that across And now I'm at the other corner, so I'll just go ahead and go into the corner without worrying about the front loop of that. Then chain one, turn it around, and then just work one single crochet across the row in every stitch. And you want to do that for two rows. So you're going to have a total of three rows for the tongue. If you want to make the tongue longer, go right ahead and make it longer. I mean, you should customize things to your liking. That's how we all learn. So just go ahead and put one single crochet in each for two plus rows, however many you decide. And when you're done with your tongue length, go ahead and chain one and pull it through. Cut the yarn, pull it through. Now just go ahead and sew in the ends from your tongue. Now for the laces, um, you can use actual laces or you can do what I did and I just chained out about 90 inches of just chaining, ended it, and then I'm going to use this as my laces. And I want you to take, if you have bobby pins available, bobby pins come in really handy for this next step. Because what I do is, I make sure you have the bobby pins that are kind of closed, as opposed to the ones that kind of flare out, the ones that are kind of, they kind of are closed a little bit more. What you want to do is, I take the bobby pin, and I stick it in, that way I can thread the laces through with this and it's much easier it helps it get it through and do it as close to the knot as you can get so when you're adding your laces make sure that you go in line with each row that way they'll stay nice and straight and kind of put them as wide as you'd like them to be however it looks good to you just have fun with it this is all about what you want to do with it I also recommend that you wear 
the slipper while you're putting your laces on. That way you can get a better look at where you want things to end up. Just go pick a spot that's far enough over. And you go in and you bring it out the back side of that same stitch. And you gotta be careful because sometimes you'll snag a bit of the red as well. And then find your spot over here on the same row. And if you see, if it's not, doesn't look right, go ahead and pull it out and do it again. Because that's what I'm doing with this one. I need to go another stitch over. And if you see, if it's not, doesn't look right, go ahead and pull it out and do it again. Because that's what I'm doing with this one. I need to go another stitch over. them and just kind of lace them up to how it looks good to you. And if you need to go through and adjust them, loosen them. You can loosen some to make it fit a little better. So if you need to shorten your laces, you can go ahead and do that now. So the end where you ended, you can always undo that knot at the end and then make it shorter. The other end is a little tougher. Um, you'll have to take out each individual stitch, but it is doable. If you want to shorten the other end, give it some space before, you know, give it plenty of space first. Go ahead and just cut the other side that you can't undo easily. And then there's a little loop. You just pull it. The next one has a loop. Go ahead and pull it. Just keep pulling at these loops until you get to your desired length. And this is only if you've made your laces too long. Um, maybe go for about 60 or 70 inches worth of laces. I chained out way too many. And just keep pulling those loops. The other side undoes really easily, just like you were to undo any row. But once you hit where you're good, just go ahead and pull the string. And it tightens itself right back up. <laughs> 